Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about positional advantages in chess, and we're going to be talking about what happens if we get a positional advantage in chess, and then we build that positional advantage to the point where we just can't find a better square for any of our pieces. What do we do with that point? How do we continue? And we're going to be talking a little bit about how positional chess and strategic chess are related in this sense, which is if you build up a strong enough positional advantage, a lot of times it will turn into a strategic advantage. So anyways, if you like content like this and want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So again, positional advantages in chess have to do with weak squares, good pieces, um, bishop pairs, things like that, whereas strategic advantages have to do with plants. Okay, so those are our definitions of positional and strategic for the purpose of this video. So this video, we're going to be taking a look at a really uh, famous game. It's a lot of people's one of their favorite games uh, is Nigel Short versus uh, John Timon, uh, played in Tilburg back in 1991. So it was an Alkine's defense. So we have e4, uh, knight f6, e5. So, you know, normal Alkine's defense stuff, knight d5, d, you know, d6, knight f3, uh, g6, uh, bishop c4, knight b6, bishop d3, bishop g7. Uh, everybody's just fighting for the middle of the board. Black is trying to get back his share of the center. White has a little bit more space. Everybody's fighting for the e5 square. Pretty much standard stuff right now. So queen e2, knight c6, castles, uh, castles. Uh, we have h3. This is to prevent bishop to g4 so that white can continue to fight for e5. Now at some point here a5 and a4 always get thrown in. It, 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 sometimes it changes who initiates. Sometimes white initiates. Sometimes black initiates. Um, in this case black initiates it with a5 and then white has to play a4. And the reason they almost always get thrown in is because if one side plays a4 the other side has to play a5 and if one side plays a5 the other side has to play a4 because neither side can allow that pawn to advance again. Uh, in white's case the bishop would get trapped. In black's case the, the knight would get trapped. So since they can't allow their pieces to get uh, de facto trapped, uh, they, they have to play a5. So we have d takes e5, d takes c5, uh, knight to d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. Uh, we have rook e1 holding that pawn on e5. We have pawn to e6, and then we have knight to d2. So already, positionally, who is better? Okay, and this is really, really important, because when we're looking at positional stuff, what are we talking about? We're talking about things that don't have to do with the plan. Okay, so what's a plan? Well, a plan is like, are we attacking the king side? Are we attacking the queen side? Are we attacking the center? Those are our basic plans in the opening and middle game. In the end game, it can be different. Like maybe the end game, our plan is I'm going to take my king and I'm going to run it over here to the queen side and take all of black's pawns, or I'm going to run it towards his pawns, or I'm going to try to attack, you know, whatever. So strategic is planning, and basic plans are king side, queen side, center. Okay, what's positional? Positional is like good pieces, bad pieces. Uh, you know, how, how well placed are my pieces? That's positional. So positionally here, white's doing pretty good. White has a positional advantage. White has a little bit more space in the middle of the board, and black has a bad bishop. He has a bad bishop on the c8 square. So these are these are minor, these are minor things. But white is going to try to improve the position of his pieces. He's not doing anything particularly strategic in this position, other than it just generally attacking the center of the board, which both sides are doing. That's kind of the default strategic plan. When neither side has clear dominance on the king side or the queen side or the center, the default strategic plan is just, okay, attack the center. And the default strategic plan is actually just a positional plan. It's take my pieces and put them on better squares positionally. So you see this crossover between strategic and positional because strategic is planning, positional is things like piece placement, weak squares, etc. So if your plan is just to put your pieces on better squares, your strategic plan is just, it's a positional plan. It's, I want to put my pieces in better positions. So that's what Nigel Short is doing here. He's just, I'm going to improve the position of my pieces. So we have knight d5, and Timon is doing the same thing. He's just, I need to put my knight on a better square. I need to find a good square for my light squared bishop. So I'm going to play my knight to d5. That's a better square than b6. So uh, Nigel Short, knight f3. f3 was a better square than d2. Uh, queen to c5, and then we have e queen e4. Again, e4 was a better square than e2. We're just making these small positional improvements. There's no clear strategy yet. A, a strategy has not emerged yet for either side. Each side is just making these minor positional improvements for their pieces. So now queen to uh, b4 threatens to exchange queens. Bishop c4, Nigel Short says no. Nigel start, is starting to see the beginnings of a strategic plan, and he's willing to sacrifice a little bit of his position to get it. So bishop to c4, knight to b6, and then we have this move, pawn to b3, a, a positional no-no, right? So he just made a positional no-no. He just said, I'm giving up my bishop pair. 
So here you go. You can have the bishop pair. We have double pawns. We have an isolated pawn on a4. And black has the bishop pair. He has two bishops, two whites, bishop and knight. So positionally, black should be better. Strategically, black has a problem. Right? So, so what did Nigel Short see in this position? Why was he willing to do this? Because, well, positionally, he had already put his pieces on some pretty good squares. And what he noticed was is that his pieces were going to reach a maximum. So they were going to get to a point where he couldn't put them on any better squares. So he needed a strategic plan. So when he played b3 takes takes, what he's saying is he's saying, okay, look, strategically, you can't develop these pieces on the queen side efficiently, rapidly, or really at all in any real way. He has an immediate tactical threat, which is bishop a3. But he started realizing the beginnings of a strategic plan, which was he has a huge dominance over here right now. The queen, the bishop, and the rook, they're all on this side of the board. And this side of the board is cut in half. It is really hard for the pieces on the queen side to get to the king side, which means that all of white's remaining pieces, after he traded that knight for that bishop, all of white's remaining pieces will be able to get to the king side. Okay, so now he has a strategy. I'm going to attack the king side. Great. Short has a strategy. Okay, so we have rook e8, uh, rook d1, just taking, again, small positional improvement, positional and strategic, going hand in hand. Rook d1, rook's on the open file, queen to c5, uh, queen h4. So now just moving pieces to the king side. b6, bishop e3, hitting the queen, queen c6, bishop h6, moving that piece towards the king side. Bishop h8, rook to d8, just attacking, bishop to b7, rook a d1. Bishop back to g7, rook d7, rook f8, bishop g7, king g7, rook on 1 to d4, rook e8, queen f6, king g8, h4, h5, and now it looks like white has, again, managed to use his strategic plan of attacking the king side to improve his positional situation, which is his pieces are beautifully placed. All of his pieces are on perfect squares, but it looks like his position has reached a maximum. You know, his position has gotten to the point where positionally he can't improve anymore. And this is a terrible thing if it happens, because if if Black manages to make a few moves that allow him to exchange some pieces, if all these pieces magically disappear off the board and all these pieces could exchange, white positionally should be lost. You know, we have like double up isolated pawns. We have an isolated pawn on a4 that would just get snapped off immediately. And it looks like it's very difficult for white to make any progress. If he moves this knight on f3, for example, there's this threat on g2. So black is kind of nailing down this threat on g2. So how does white proceed? How does white improve his position? He's managed to achieve this almost positional dominance with his pieces, where black's position is nearly frozen, at least for the next couple of moves. How does he proceed here? Here was his idea, uh, because he has one more piece that he can add to the attack. And he can continue attacking black's king side strategically. So here's his idea: king h2, rook c8. So what what is uh, what is he trying to do? He's actually trying to bring this rook to he's trying to bring this rook to c8 because if he can bring this rook to c8 and he can temporarily get it out of the way, he's trying to create some exchanges later. That's basically the plan. So he plays rook c8, but this allows this move king to g3, and now he starts realizing, oh no, I don't have enough time to stop white from doing what he's threatening to do with this move king to g3, which is just this crazy threat. And now he doesn't have enough time, so he takes that rook that he just put on c8, which was, as it turns out, a mistake, and he brings it back. He brings it back to e8, going, wait a minute, I need to kick that rook on d7. I need to kick it out of there. And I need to kick it out of there fast, because guess what white's doing? He's going to play king f4, and then bishop c8. He's trying to kick that rook out of the d7 square fast, but it's too late. White plays, see if you can find the next move king to g5 black resigns the threat is king h6 with queen g7 mate coming and there is nothing black can do to stop it in time if for example king h7 gets played rook f7 check is going to be a winning attack and short is going to break through so that is what happens like if you have a positional uh like if you're if your pieces reach their positional maximum a lot of times you can turn that into a strategic attack. You can say, okay, my pieces are reaching. I have a positional advantage. I have more space. So I have a slightly better piece. You know, okay, let me put my pieces on better squares. Okay, I don't see a way to improve my position anymore. Let's turn this into a strategic attack. Let's cut the board in half. Let me attack the king side. 
And let me just throw my pieces on the king side. Okay, I got all my pieces over to the king side. They've reached a maximum. What do I do next? Well, find a way to add, you know, more ammunition to the fire. Find a way to improve your pieces even more. In this case, he threw everything at him, including his king. So it was a very beautiful game. Uh, this was Nigel Short versus John T. Mom played in 1991, which shows how positional and strategic ideas work together and how you can use a positional advantage to create a strategic advantage and then use that strategic advantage to create a positional advantage and then wash, rinse, repeat until eventually uh, you win the game. Uh, so anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own play. Uh, thank you very much for watching.